Yeah. Our latest freshly weaned marema pups. Come on. Absolute peak. So, today we're going to talk quail. So, in conjunction with a company called Game Farm Australia, who've been putting 68 years into uh, the genetics of their beautiful Japanese quail, we, together with them, are doing a pastured model now, and I can't wait to show you how it works. Um, it's very, very unique. A couple of people have tried it, whatever, but we've, we seem to have hit a sweet spot now. Um, we've just finished negotiations with Key in Sydney, and they're gonna be putting, on the, putting us on the menu. So I can't wait to show you guys the way we're doing this quail. It's a bit different to a lot of the other models we've got here, but it's a beautiful pastured model, and I can't wait to show you. Come on. Come and have some breakfast. So as you guys already know, we're all about free range here on Tatha Place. Um, all of our birds are free to range. This netting's pretty much ornamental for these birds. They can jump over that. So they've got access to the whole place. We all know how much room our pigs have got to roam. But the quail's a slightly different sort of a thought, thought process. Um, probably the easiest predated animal in the world. I've even seen crows eating them. So they do need a really high level of predator protection that even the dogs can't offer. So we use these field pods, what I'm calling field pods, um, very common in poultry. But essentially the, the model is that they're in a pod that is enclosed. Uh, obviously they can still get all the benefits from the sun and the beautiful fresh air and, and the beautiful water we give them. And then what it is, is that we move these field pods forward every single day. So they're always standing on and consuming fresh pasture. So that's the way the model works. We're not claiming that it's free range. Um, we are, the ratios are really low. So the actual dimensions of this pod allow us to carry 396 in each. We're only doing about 250. So we're still keeping it well under any sort of shedded ratios. Um, and we're giving them that. So in the, in the four weeks that they're here, they actually get 150 square meters of fresh pasture. And for 250 quail, I mean, that's just amazing. So it's still very much <coughs> a pastured model is what we're referring it to. And um, it's working really, really well. It does offer them the really high level of predator protection that they need, um, as well as giving them access to fresh pasture, fresh air, sunlight, and all the goodies from that. So let's have a look. So this is the inside of one of our quail pots. So you can see the beautiful little Japanese quail here. Uh, very happily consuming uh, perennial pasture. This is a perennial paddock here. Uh, there are some legumes and stuff in here which they enjoy. They really love the, the clovers and stuff like that. So they are, and, and even the staff and the vets at Game Farm are surprised at how much pasture these guys are actually consuming. Um, we're even finding a, a green tinge on the very inside of their breast and we're, we're putting that down to sort of the amount of pasture they're consuming. So they're eating much less grain-based feed. So like all the feed systems on Tatra Place Free Range, if you guys can see, we've got the, the 90 degree bend here into our feeder box, which means that the little quail have to put their head in there so we don't get any wastage, which is a great system. It's been working well out here for years. Um, they've got their drinker nipples here, which we can adjust up and down as they get a little bit taller and a little bit older. Um, the foam on the side here is just so that when we're moving the, the actual um, pods forward with a winch, um, this kind of bumps the birds out of the way so they don't get crushed. Uh, so you can see they're still out in the beautiful open fresh air. They've got beautiful fresh pasture. Um, they've got the predator protection which they need. Like I said, I mean, just about anything's going to eat that, right? I mean, it even looks pretty tasty for me. So um, this is a system where we can uh, copy nature uh, but then allow them to have the predator protection that they really need so it's working really well um, they're you know they fit into the program beautifully they're, they're actually bad feed converters which means that a lot of the food out of here that these birds are eating is going through the animal and onto the pasture and we're finding great results I'll give you some shots in a minute at the color of this beautiful pasture that's resulting from what's coming out the back end of these quail. So they fit beautifully into the system. Very easy to manage. You know exactly where the fertility is going, obviously, because they're in here. And um, yeah, they fit beautifully into the regenerative system. Again, 
Another animal where I would ask, why, why are we keeping them in barns? They're brilliant little animals. They're great foragers um, and they fit in really well into a regenerative system. They come around you much, mate? They love it. They the pick your feet. Things, they the pick... hardest thing's not standing on them. Tell us when you have a little sore on your shin or something, they oh, pick yeah. the crap out of you. I mean, they're omnivores, as people forget. Chickens, ducks, quail, most birds are omnivorous. So, I, eat yeah, I, had, a, I had a little cut on my shin. This is when the weather was a bit nicer. And I went in there to do something and they're all jumping up, pecking the scab off my <laughs> shin. Jeez, it hurt. So it's, it's pretty obvious to see here where they've been. This has been the last few days. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, that's a very thorough coverage and nice green thatch. And that's essentially just gonna turn into compost. Um, and you can see the, the sort of coverage we're getting with these quails, phenomenal. So if you walk down here, as we go further and further away from where they are each day, you can see we've had a little bit of rain, which helps. But a lot of this really beautiful green pasture down here, has come through this system. Uh, again, we're getting a lot of little legumes through, which I didn't have a lot of legumes in this paddock, but they're obviously enjoying the fertility from the quail. And the further we go down here, it turns into a nice green, green line of grass, where the tool starts to come up through all this fresh growth that's come up through where the quail pods have been. So where this paddock essentially was, has been neglected for quite a few years, it's amazing to see the results of give it some fertility and, and just step back and, and watch what comes through. So we're in another pod now, and these are the three week old ones that we get off Game Farm Australia. Um, they're probably about 150 grams when we get them and they go out between 230 and 250 grams. So they put on a fair bit of weight when they're here. It doesn't, it might not seem like a, a big amount of protein, but the flavor that, that we're getting out of these birds is phenomenal. I'm, I, I, I'm a, I think I can admit, I don't think I'd ever eaten quail until about two or three months ago when we started, but I'm hooked on it. It is phenomenal. And um, the chefs and the feedback we're getting, we've had a really late nomination for the Delicious Awards, which we're, we're excited about. So toss it in with some of you know the best produce in Australia and we'll, and we'll see how we go there. We obviously haven't got any results yet, but this is how they come in. Um, these guys have only been here one night, no dramas. Um, it was been cold and it's been windy and it's been wet, but like I said, this is a bird that um, only really came into a production model sort of 800, 800 odd years ago. These, there's not thousands of years of, of history growing these things commercially so they've still got a lot of wild instincts and they do really really well out here on the pasture so hopefully we want to get to the point where we're putting out a thousand of these a week um, we're already up to 500 so we've made a really good start three two these are the crates that they travel in uh, we can fit 60 of the young ones and when they go back to the abattoir we only put 40 in there plenty of room we don't have any dramas moving these birds they they truck really well So really simple water system guys. We have a thousand litre IBC tank there, which is the perfect amount of pressure. We just use these domestic hoses um, into a, a junction here. So from one, it just daisy changes across to, we've got five pods out at the moment. Really simple system. I like it because there's not a lot can go wrong with it. I don't have to be carrying buckets and stuff down here. It's automatic enough. All we do is just keep that tank full. So what's really exciting about the collaboration between Tasper Place Free Range and Game Farm Australia is within this new company that we've set up, Marema Pasture Quail, we're actually hatching the egg, brooding the animal, growing it on pasture and processing it all in-house because nobody else touches this bird. So they get processed.
process at Goulston, um, and it's a fantastic facility. The way they process quail is really, really clever. Uh, nothing like processing a chicken or a duck, and they've been doing it for a really long time, and they're really, really good at it. So we offer this bird head on, feed on, a super high-end premium product, and we've been getting amazing feedback, and we're super excited moving forward. We've only been doing this for a couple of months now, but all signs are positive. So getting in these pods with these birds and moving around in there is actually quite difficult. As you guys have seen, uh, pretty easy to stand on them. So we've actually developed these pods so that we fill up the feed from the outside and the watering systems are obviously all done from the outside. So this is the quail crumble. It's a super high energy feed. Um, you know, they don't eat much compared to a chicken or a duck. These particular birds are actually eating a lot of pasture too, as we've spoken about. But that's the way the system works. We can fill it from the outside. We don't have to wander around in there with our big, big feet and potentially trample the poor little fella. So this is, we, we arrive here, we hook it up to the winch, we drag it forward, we fill the feet up and we check the water and we're off to the next one. So thank you for joining to me today to have a look at the quail and the pod system and the way that we are rotating these animals around. Uh, thank you, of course, to Game Farm Australia, who we're in collaboration with, with those beautiful little Japanese quail. Um, it is expanding very quickly. It's only sort of limited at the rate that I can build those pods at the moment. So hopefully you start seeing Marema Pashi quail popping up at some of the restaurants and on people's social media. But otherwise, if you're part of our subscription service, you're gonna be getting some. Um, quick plug here, about to shoot another video on how to break down a duck. Uh, don't be intimidated by a duck. It's beautiful red meat, it's a great protein, and it's really fantastic to work with. So click on that video too and I'll show you how to do it. Well, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon.